Hello, this is the Casio PB1000 portable calculator. Um, it came out in 1987 and distinguished itself uh, with several interesting features including a 4 line by 40 character visible screen extending up to 8 lines with a virtual screen as well as a uh, touch screen and 8 kilobytes of resident memory expandable to 40k but the most interesting feature in my view was that not only was it programmable in basic but also in assembly language um, although the latter was really meant mostly to be used as support routines for main basic programs and could be as large as 4k in size. Nonetheless um, this was really fairly unique at that time uh, for a portable calculator anyway. And today um, I'm gonna attempt to interface it with my uh, TI-99 for a computer which is sitting right next to it. Uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm using the uh, parallel port uh, and I have a cable, custom made cable coming out of it to a uh, breakout box over here and connected uh, to a uh, miniature connector on the side which is the expansion port for the PB1000. That calculator had a couple of interfaces that could be used with that port, including a cassette interface and a floppy drive interface. Uh, the blob here is essentially hot glue. I used it to keep the wires in position and uh, to prevent them from being ripped out. They were pretty flimsy and the connector is really tiny. It was very fussy work um, connecting it. Nonetheless, um, this is it. Um, one of the things uh, about that uh, expansion port is that the data ports, it has one data port uh, which is 8 bits um, or 1 byte in size. However, the three most significant bits are used by the system, so really we only have uh, 5 bits, five, the 5 lower bits of the 8 bit data port or I.O. port I should say, uh, which are usable uh, for my purposes. Um, and uh, I've decided uh, that in order to be able to interface it properly for bi uh, bilateral communication with the TI, I needed to have a couple of control lines. So that took two more bits, so that left me with really three bits, the lower three bits of the data port um, to exchange actual data. That gives me a range of zero to seven as far as uh, decimal numbers are concerned. This is still fine um, if we use codes um, with uh, the communication protocol, we should be okay. So, uh, first step uh, today is to actually test that bi uh, bidirectional communication. I wrote a very simple uh, communication protocol um, and as well as a couple of assembly language routines one for reading the port and one for writing to the port um, which uh, will allow the TI to communicate with the PB1000 and vice versa. So let's see how that goes. So on the TI side I have an extended basic program um, which also incorporates um, some assembly language routines for parallel port control and uh, we'll go ahead and get this uh, started here and what it's going to do essentially it's going to go ahead and send the number and it's going to wait for the PB1000 to read that number then send it back for confirmation um, on the PB1000 I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, can get a good focus here somehow that uh, com test basic file um, let's go ahead and do that all right it's running so if we look on the screen here we see that the TI is sending numbers and it's receiving the same number indicating that the PB1000 is actually getting the proper data and is able to send it successfully. 
and if we uh, look at the screen here we can see that is receiving and sending the data I'm sorry about all the reflections here there that's probably better and uh, yeah this is going pretty good um, I have it a bit slowed down with some delay loops um, simply because I wanted to make sure that I have a solid protocol with uh, no uh, uh, timing issues However, I'll play with it offline to see if I can shorten the delay to maximize the throughput. But yeah, it does work. So next step is what to do with this. Well, I have a couple of ideas um, for simple games that um, could pit the PB1000 um, to the uh, ti 99 a That should be an interesting exercise. So more to come. All right, so I'm back and it's a few weeks later um, it took a while to get this going first I need to figure out what I wanted to do as a demonstration and I ended up settling on the uh, version version of the game of combat the classic venerable game that came with the Atari 2600 back in the seven or late 70s um, and um, here I am pitting the TI 99 uh, for a computer represented by the green tank here and the PB1000 in the blue tank. Um, in this scenario, um, I did make the tank capabilities asymmetric in order to keep things a little bit interesting. And so the TI tank is pretty much dumb as a rock. However, it has unlimited firing range, which means that if it lines up the uh, opposite tank it will shoot it at any range whereas the PB1000 tank um, has uh, much better seeking and tracking abilities however has a limited range of only five spaces so um, if we want to take a real-world analogy we'll say the TI tank is uh, the equivalent of the Sherman tank in World War II and the PB1000 tank is more like a uh, uh, Tiger II tank uh, Panzer tank from the German side. Um, it was uh, lengthy uh, development here because I had to write essentially two programs, one for the uh, TI-99 for a computer and that's not so bad really because we have uh, many mod uh, modern tools that I can use to create programs and transfer them really directly to the TI. Um, whereas on the PB1000, which is currently connected over here um, via a uh, this concoction of cables I've talked about, and it's going to the back of the PEB to the uh, parallel port. Um, and the development of uh, the program on this computer um, was far more laborious simply because we're dealing with a four line screen. And I have currently no capability of saving and loading programs, um, nor uh, the capability of um, transferring uh, a, uh, a program from an external source, um, like a text editor, for example, into the, directly into the PB. There is a great emulator actually available for it. However, um, again, it's a standalone emulator and uh, the transfer issue remains a problem. So the solution was of course to go back to the roots and this is essentially handwritten uh, program um, you know which works um, and debugging is actually quite uh, uh, quite easy um, but um, it does take some time to type it all in and get things uh, going um, I always I was always worried about uh, either uh, resetting the computer with uh, by my unplugging by plugging the connector the wrong way, or the battery is draining out and then I would lose the program, um, which would be very very uh, laborious to re-enter in its entirety. In any case, everything went well. Um, now I have to figure out how to film uh, this battle. Um, and I think I'm going to use two cameras um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Alright, so we're all set up. 
Here goes nothing. So every time you hear a beep, that's the PB-1000 making its move. range so even dumb tanks can get lucky oh, this is gonna be a little bit more interesting looks like So the PB-1000 uh, obviously does not have uh, the graphic capabilities to display the board, but it does have an internal representation of the entire field, and that's how it determines its uh, moves. Inching closer. Had the TI turned the other way, it would have been the end of the PB-1000 here. Well, this is getting interesting. He got him. There we are. Okay, so this could go on for a while, uh, but you get the idea. And uh, it's a really fun demonstration of interfacing two different, completely different computers. There's really no relation whatsoever. Um, and uh, despite the limited uh, Port capabilities of PB1000 as far as the interfacing is concerned with only three bits available, uh, one can still make uh, use of those uh, in a very efficient and effective manner as demonstrated here. Obviously um, the uh, options are unlimited and it's only restricted by your imagination. In any case, um, this was again a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed watching that. Thank you.